Hello out there, this is Wake Angel 2001 coming at you with another commission for Tekka Spike. This one is Nicole, of course, in her Lynx form. Uh, you know, as an aside, I wonder why Nicole chose a Lynx as her animal type when she made her body. Um, because, you know, most of the Lynxes in the comic book series are bad guys. Like, they're members of the, of the Raiju Ninja Clan... There's Lightning Lynx, and then, of course, there's Larry Lynx, which is the ultimate jinx, and it's hard to believe that she would want to emulate that. But anyway, this is another beloved character from the old cartoon and comic book series, so you know what I gotta do, don't ya? Uh, you might want to grab a drink, because this one's gonna be a long one. We were first introduced to Nicole in the classic Sad AM cartoon, of course where she was basically Princess Sally's PDA that she kept in a little boot pocket. <clears throat> uh, now, she never changed form from this in the cartoon series, although even she would get some character development, uh, mostly involved with having to communicate with Sonic. There was an episode where uh, Sonic was forced to use Nicole um, to, you know, find something, and uh, the way her manner of speaking, uh, using the big words and stuff, drove him, um, you know, drove him quite bonkers. In frustration, he started shaking her and yelling at her to speak English. So she actually altered her speech patterns in such a way that Sonic would be able to understand her better. Um, this actually came up in a later episode when uh, she, when Sonic actually started talking to her directly and. Uh, and and Sally lamented that she hates it when when she starts talking that way. I I kind of like that. That that's so cute. Um, uh, Sonic also convinced um, Nicole to open up some forbidden files. Um, you know, as as an uh, it, to show her adaptive AI. Um, like like any computer program, she had certain locked files which Sally wasn't supposed to be able to access until she reached a certain age. But Sonic was able to point out that without the information from those files, they were all going to die right there, meaning Sally would never reach that age, uh, meaning that it would be pointless for her to maintain that confidentiality. Um, so yeah, that proves that rather than just a voice in a box, Nicole was an actual, you know, being capable of absorbing, responding to, and, and uh, you know, forming relationships and you know, uh, actually thinking, having abstract thoughts. Uh, so yeah, I mean, that's Nicole in the cartoon series. Uh, of course, the cartoon series only lasted 24 episodes, so there really wasn't that much room for expansion. Uh, the real story comes in the comic book series. Alright, you're going to have to bear with me for a second, because this is going to be quite the info dump. Um, Nicole was built in the future, or rather, a future. Um, her construction was commissioned by uh, Queen Sally and King Sonic to, um, to Rotor, uh, who built her and then sent her back in time in a force field bubble where she appeared uh, to Princess Sally and uh, she picked her up. Um, it's worth noting that Nicole actually wasn't in the first dozen or so issues of the comic and was introduced around the same issue that Princess Sally found her vest in the Hope Chest. I believe this was the Sonic In Your Face special, which came out roughly around the time of issue 12. Um, so from then on, Nicole pretty much filled the same role that she did in the, um, in the cartoon series. That is, uh, providing, advi providing advice. I mean, she had information about the future and was programmed to keep that um, safeguarded so that no one would ever find out and mess up the timeline, but she would still be able to help. Um, apparently she would have been destroyed in the final battle against Dr. Robotnik, but, you know, the future was altered even before the Super Genesis wave, so it's unlikely that the future was going to un unfold exactly the same way. Um, of course, there was an incident that happened where, um, there was, where Rotor was performing some maintenance on Nicole, and Sally accidentally tripped on a wire, causing her brain and Nicole's to switch. So Nicole actually got to experience life in an organic body for a few minutes. Um, she got to walk around, feel the wind in her hair, and when she caught a glimpse of Sonic, uh, Sally's lingering passion for him actually caused her to experience sexual excitation. Um, of course, these are all feelings that Nicole was unwilling to part with once she had to return to the PDA body, so she began trying to form herself a temporary hollow body. 
At first, she couldn't maintain it for a very long time because it was a huge energy draw. Plus, it left her vulnerable to hackers. But, um, upon, re upon rebuilding Knothole City using, um, using the hijacked nanites, she was able to construct a semi-permanent body for herself that she could use whenever she wanted within the city limits. Um, of course, this wouldn't always be happy times in Sunshine, because then came the attack of the Iron Dominion. Uh, the leader of the Iron Dominion, the Iron Queen, possessed a power basically called Technomagic. Um, Technomagic is pretty much the ability to control any electronic technological device with nothing more than your willpower. Um, of course, this means that she was able to almost immediately enthrall Nicole and have her do her bidding, uh, trapping the citizens of the city within their, within their own homes, and those who were out in the street were terrified when they saw the very ground itself turn into hands and claws which captured them. Um, yeah, this was uh, not very pleasant. Um, although Sally would interface virtually with Nicole and help her set up firewalls to protect her from the techno magic, at which point Nicole only pretended to be loyal to the Iron Queen and, um, and stall her plans while Sonic and Sally got um, reinforcements from the ninja clans in the West with Monkey Khan. Um, this led to a final confrontation where Nicole was able to defeat the Iron Queen and kick her out of the city. But, a lot of the people were completely unaware that Nicole had actually been working as a double agent for almost the entire time, and they really thought that Nicole had been against them. This bred a bit of superstition between the people of the city and her, and um, it was taking uh, quite a toll on relations. Um, Nicole actually had to withdraw for quite a while from the public eye, and it took a long time before people realized how useful she actually was to them again. Uh, this really didn't help that Ixus Nogus was feeding those negative vi He was both feeding off of and seeding those negative vibes, uh, which was not good. Um, fortunately, um, they began to trust Nicole again, and Rotor never doubted her. Uh, she even helped him build that um, nanite suit, which uh, uh, helped fix his back problem, and uh, helped him become Iron Rotor. Hey, remember Iron Rotor? I made a figure of him. Uh, there was one more thing. It turned out that Ixus Nogus's crystal magic could actually utterly destroy the nanites that, um, you know, made up the city and gave Nicole the ability to make her new body. Um, this is actually a pretty interesting revelation. Of course, the Super Genesis wave came along before we could actually see Ixus use his crystal magics against the city in such a way. And speaking of the Super Genesis wave, um... Before I continue with the post-Super Genesis continuity, I just want to remind you guys that um, because of residual energy left over from the Super Genesis wave, Nicole was actually able to restore the memories of the previous continuity to the main cast. So remember, um, uh, even though the universe has been rebooted and everybody has a set of memories to fit the new reboot universe, the main core cast, Sonic, Sally, Bunny, Antoine, Amy, Tails, Rotor, um, uh, they, they all possess the actual real memories that they have from the previous universe. Um, I mean, uh, the, you know, they, just in case, you know? Okay, so uh, I just wanted to mention that really quickly. Uh, so, yeah, Nicole had a new redesign, one that has shoes on. So now, um, the controversy of do Sonic characters have toes uh, means um, I can't just point at Nicole and says, of course they do, there they are. I don't know if she has toes under, that, uh, sh under those shoes anymore. And also, uh, she can manifest a body through her PDA simply by plugging a power ring into it like a super battery. That's pretty nifty. Of course, in the new reboot universe, uh, Nicole has a new origin story. Rather than being built by Rotor in the future, she was built by a Lynx scientist named Dr. Elodie, which explains now why she's a Lynx. Uh, Dr. Elodie was hoping to save his daughter's life by creating a backup copy of her mind using an artificial intelligence program, which was supposed to learn how to copy her mind and create a digital copy of it. Unfortunately, 
um, Nicole failed at this task. Instead of forming a backup copy of Elodie's daughter's mind, she instead developed her own mind, becoming somewhat becoming sentient in her own right. Um, Elodie, after failing to save his daughter, didn't know what to do with the AI, so he put it on the on um, that little PDA device and gave it to the king, who passed it on to his daughter Sally when she was young. Um, the two became friends, and um, and this time Nicole pretty much wanted to manifest a body, um, not because she uh, felt how awesome it was to feel physically attracted to somebody, but because it just felt like a natural part of her growth and evolution. Um, so yeah, that's that's that was pretty much the origin story in the uh, post reboot universe, which was just done by um, the recently concluded most recent story arc in the Sonic Universe um, comic book. Uh, so that is the backstory of Nicole. And I have been talking about this for 11 and a half minutes, and I'm pretty sure you guys just want to see me make a toy, right? So, let's do this. Um, without any further ado, making the uh, Nicole action figure. Nicole would use parts from various figures, but of course the most important are going to be Wave's torso and Tails' head. Um, the head didn't require me to cut anything off of it, but I did have to make a whole bunch of stuff including the little hair tufts on her ears and her very distinct hairstyle. Um, for her two little ponytails, which are covered by that little bead thing that she has going on, I used a length of beaded chain. This is very common for like keychains and stuff like that. Um, I just cut off a few beads from it, um, uh, used a little bit of crazy glue to keep them um, glued closer together, and then hung them off the back of her head. Uh, of course, they had to be painted up, and, you know, she has brown fur, black hair, and those cute little beads are purple and orange. Um, I think the hardest part was her dress, because um, this is pre-Super Genesis Wave, that purple toga ribbon looking thing, and um, I think the hardest part was making sure that it had that nice flared out pleated look at the bottom. I had to make the pinches in just the right place, and make sure it flared out just enough without without flaring out too much, and of course making sure that there was uh, enough clearance for the hips to fit inside. Uh, once painted up, it actually looks really good. I was afraid that um, that it was it was going to look like she was just wearing a lampshade around her waist, but fortunately it came out better than that. Um, now let's move on to her limbs, which have a somewhat unique recipe. That is Wave's arm, but the hand on the end of it doesn't come from any Sonic figure. It is still a Jazzwares hand toy. It comes from a robot chicken nerd. Um, so yeah, um, there's no wrist articulation because it had to be glued in place, but it is a much better size for her hand than any of the official Sonic hands would have been. Well, okay, classic Sonic's hands would have fit, but it would have been clenched in a fist and it doesn't really fit Nicole's character. Uh, the feet are scratch made from epoxy sculpt and they are attached to the ends of Espio's legs, which I used as her legs. So let's take a look at the completed figure. Here we are at the 13 minute and 45 second mark and you finally can see Nicole in all of her glory. I love how she came out. She is so cute and her details are so nice. Um, speaking of which, as an homage to the way that she's always digitizing and appearing as a hologram, on one of her feet I painted those little green technical greeble lines that she has when you see her going into her hologram form. I didn't want to mess up the colors of the character, so it's on the bottom of the foot where you don't really see it unless you want to. Uh, and that is Nicole. I was afraid that her dress would limit her waist and, and hip movements, but both her waist and hips still work. So I'm taking this as a major win. And this is probably my longest custom video for a single small character. Uh, sorry about that, but I've had a lot to say about Nicole because she's awesome. I'll see you next time.